First of all, being in a truck is identical to being in prison. Only difference is you're moving and you're able to get in out your cell when you need to. You have the same. If you have to report your same. If you're a driver with a company, you got a you got a company driver ID. So when you call in, you got to give them your ID number, your truck number, your cell number. I need your commentary. I need your special kind of commentary. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Damn, I'm ugly. But anyway, uh, you can see my truck. So what's crazy is I get here last night, about an hour away from the drop, and I park behind the Planet Fitness. I go in last night, take a shower, do a quick little workout, and I'm updating my little GPS or whatever. So, you know, I come back, sleep for the night, get up in the morning, go get a, thinking I'm ready to get a good workout in. Call my agent, I'm like, yo, how much fuel I got left because it's low? And she like, you have zero fuel left. Like, are you at a fuel station? I'm like, nah, I ain't at no fuel station. I'm at the Planet Fitness. So she like, yeah, you know, we're gonna have to call the tow truck out, bring you fuel and all that. So that's gonna cost me like $700. I'm like, oh, that's dead. I'll take a lift, grab some gallons of water, and go to the fuel station, grab some diesel, and, you know, do it the easy way and the less costly way, I'm gonna say. So yeah, that's how my morning's going. So I had to put on a reflective black vest because I'm in all black and I don't want this Uber or Lyft driver to think I'm on some ski mask shit. New drivers. Now let me let me let me just preference. This is a brand new driver, sir. Brand new, just got his license driver, bro. And this and the particular company that he's driving for is a starter company that would give you the opportunity if you have any situations on your background. Okay. I'm I'm just throwing those two in so that you know what the situation is with this young man. The floor is yours, doctor. I, I'm, I'm a little confused. He parked at Planet Fitness, but he didn't know if he had fuel. His, his fuel gauges ain't working. He had to call into the company to find out if he had fuel. Help me understand that part. Are you asking me or 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 you you yes. just you you asking me? Yes, I'm confused. He he parked at Planet Fitness. But he had to call into his company to find out if he had fuel. I'm just as confused as you are, sir. Ah, I, I don't know. So from the story, he goes to the Planet Fitness. He he shuts down. He gets his little workout in. He takes his shower, goes back to the truck. He gets in his truck. He goes to sleep. He gets ready to go. I guess he looks at his fuel gauge and I don't know if he has one of those fuel gauges that has the light that comes on to let you, or the fuel gauge is just low. And he calls to somebody that monitors the gauges. Now, my question yeah. is, how how are they monitoring the gauges? Like, how how is that possible? Because that's them computerized trucks. That's that computer. Your ELD and all that shit is up to your fuel and all that. Okay. I understand that now. I'm at a loss for words, sir. You stumped me on this one, buddy. I mean, I, I thought something was going to come out of this. But the uh, only thing I can say is he must have heard me or heard about uh, uh, me seven years ago because i'm the one who started to go into planet fitness and working out taking a shower for people i'm the one who put the truckers up on that shit uh nobody was talking you you should know nobody was ever talking about no stuff like that and uh for him to not know if he got fuel or not that's the part that's bothering me like how did you park your vehicle uh, I, I'm, I'm 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 stumped on this one uh, lock this one here i i don't understand you you got to be some kind of special and they said that they was gonna have to call a tow truck to bring him fuel or tow him to get fuel and he decided no he'll get a couple of gallons of water buckets and go get fuel first of all what uber guy gonna let him put all that in their car because you're gonna need at least at least 20 gallons at least 20 gallons of fuel to get there so it doesn't slosh back and forth and bypasses the sub pump uh, I don't know. Let me see. Okay, this is this is his latest TikTok. So I I don't know if he came back with an update. Hold on. I thought I seen it. Oh man, I thought I have seen it. I can't believe it. Shout out. Shout out to this man right here. This this is the update. 
this is the update right here. He caught an Uber over to maybe a gas station or a fuel station. And I guess the Uber driver let him put diesel fuel in his car in an unsanctioned container. And he poured it in his truck. I've seen a lot of things happen in trucking, but this is a first for me. But as of right now, this this is the latest TikTok. Let's let's listen again, man. Maybe, maybe we maybe we missed something. Hold on. But anyway, uh, you can see my truck. So what's crazy is I get here last night about an hour away from the drop, and I park behind the Planet Fitness. I go in last night, take a shower, do a quick little workout, and I'm updating my load GPS or whatever. So, you know, I come back, sleep for the night, get up in the morning, go get a, thinking I'm ready to get a good workout in. Call my agent, I'm like, well, how much fuel I got left, cause it's low. And she like, you have zero fuel left. Like, are you at a fuel station? I'm like, nah, I ain't at no fuel station. I'm at the Planet Fitness. So she like, yeah, you know, we're gonna have to call the tow truck out, bring you fuel and all that. So that's gonna cost me like $700. I'm like, oh, that's dead. I'll take a lift, grab some gallons of water and go to the fuel station, grab some diesel and, you know, do it the easy way and the less costly way, I'm gonna say. I, I don't even think that's the less costly way because if I'm not mistaken, like pilot, maybe pilot, but I know I haven't seen no diesel cans at the Loves. Maybe TA, but you, you first you got to find you a diesel can, sir. And then you don't even know what color that is. And then after you find a diesel can, a diesel can only hold up to like five gallons. So that means you're going to at least need 20 gallons. You need 20 gallons. Oh, you need 20. Okay. So 10 for each tank right even if you just put 20 if you just put 10 20 on one side you just got to put it on the main side that it pumps from so nine times out of ten the main side that it pumps from is the driver's side all right um nine times out of ten i don't know how the new trucks are set up but you can shut off your passenger side tank you can go underneath there's a there's a shutoff valve underneath there and uh keep it from crossing over back and forth so you just put 20 gallons in on the, the driver's side and get to the fuel tank, you know, the fuel and fuel up. But why would you why would you go anywhere and go below a quarter tank? You never ever allow your truck, car, anything below a quarter. When it hits that quarter mark, you're empty. That's that's just keep that always on your mind. When your truck is at that last quarter before two dots before the red, you already empty. Don't wait because now you're playing with such all kind of garbage in the bottom of the tanks. Now, when you when you start filling up again, you pushing that shit around and getting it all in your filters. I mean, you just don't do that. You just never go below a quarter. My terminal manager at at the new terminal out here in Texas, he said that even if you run out of fuel and put some more fuel in the truck, it's going to take about a couple of hours for the truck to even prime back up for the fuel. With these new trucks, yeah, you're absolutely right because it's got a, they got so many different things involved. I, I That's why I told you I would never buy a new truck. That's just not going to happen. If they can build my truck according to my specs, we're fine. But I would never get all this computerized stuff and, and DEF and uh, uh, all these filtrations they have. And you'd be there forever waiting on that damn thing to, to, to uh, start back up. I need to be able to I mean, if I blew a fuel line and I had, and that's how I lost fuel, that's one thing. But to be of sane mind and body and you just stupidly driving down the road and you out of fuel, you don't deserve to be out here. There's so many wrongs about that. And there's, there is, that's like hitting a low bridge. I'm sorry. You don't belong out here if you run out of fuel.
I mean, run out of fuel because you you know you could get to a cheaper location 50 miles down the road and you happen to run out just at the motherfucking fuel spot. All right, we, we may give you a pass. But you parked your truck to go do a workout just because you wanted a free shower. That was the whole logistics, you know that. He wanted to get the free shower and park in a parking space because nine times out of 10, the fitness will let one truck or two trucks in the parking lot. But um, that was his way of having a cheap layover with a free shower. Um, to run out of fuel or to call his dispatch or call his company or whoever he called, and they told him, you're out of fuel. So they're going by whatever the electronic uh, system is sending back to them. He deserves to be sitting there waiting. Honestly, that, that's ridiculous. So the whole I, 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 premise getting into an Uber and trying to get the fuel. He, he's trying to avoid getting taxed because the company that he's working for will tax him for everything. So they're going to tax him for that fuel. And that's why he thought that he can go and do it in his words, the easy way, which I still don't think that's going to happen. I don't know. Again, he didn't come back with an update. Hold on. You you're gonna run into problems by number one. You got you're only gonna have a five gallon container, so that means yeah. you're gonna have to take an Uber over at least four times to get some fuels. So that's a lot of money in that right there. So you might as well just take the L, bro, and and let yeah. the and and have the tow truck come over, give you fuel, or just have just tow it over to the to the spot. Well, my thing is if. If, if, if it's all that, if he's at a Planet Fitness, nine times out of ten, there's a gas station nearby. He could he could have went and Planet Fitness and said, hey, do you mind if I drop my trailer for about 15 minutes? I have to go across the street and get fuel. Nine times out of ten, they're going to say, no problem, as long as you hurry up back. So you disconnect, Bob, tell your ass across the road or down the road, get some diesel fuel from a goddamn car spot just enough to get you back where you need to go. Why would you get an Uber? And you think you're going to lug diesel fuel in somebody's Uber, in somebody's private car. That doesn't make sense. You got to use your damn brains. I, I mean, these these new drivers out here don't have no survival skills. You drop that damn trailer. And if you had a plan, to, if you had a plan of fitness lockout, I'm sorry. Look outside. Look around. Go to any plan of fitness and tell me how far is the nearest gas station you see. It's going to be one very close. And how many nine? You gonna have eight out of eight out of ten gas stations that's gonna have diesel fuel for cars. So you pull up, throw fifty dollars worth of diesel fuel in there, and bring your ass back, get your trailer, and, and then slide down the road. But that's because this new wave of drivers don't have this type of trucking in their blood or in their knowledge or in their system because this stuff is not taught, man. I, I keep telling y'all this is not taught. This is learned behavior as a driver, as a trucker. These are survival skills. Now you're going to get your ass in trouble because I guarantee you they're going to come up with another way to tax him because he ran out of fuel. And so he do say he do go get fuel and put in there. And now he gets the system shut down. I don't know what y'all, what they call that shit, regen or whatever it is that you guys got to do when your shit is all messed up. Y'all got to sit there and wait for hours. You think they're not going to charge him for that? Yeah, it's a regen. Yeah, they're going to they gonna charge him for that. Because guess what? If you not making no money, they're definitely not making no money. So they're going to take money from you regardless. So, driver, what's the takeaway? Because my takeaway from it is, bro, before you even went to the spot, if it was close to shutdown time, should have kind of caught it and said, hey, let me go in and stop at this pilot, Flying J, or whatever truck stops that they have you to go to, go and get some fuel, and then roll over to the spot for the night. Well, he said he was an hour away from his drop. So if he was an hour away from his drop, he might be with one of them companies that he can't get fuel uh, until he's dropped. 
and get on the new load. Nah, you know, he's these- nah, he's he's what one of, he's he's what a he's what a mega carrier. So yeah, he okay. could he could get fuel. He could have got some. He could have got fuel before he made yeah. it to made it to the Planet Fitness. And even if and even if he was an hour from his spot, he was still in vicinity of maybe a TA or one of the mega fuel stations. So still, my takeaway from it, I would have just went on here, stop over, got some fuel, fuel all the way up. And then say, hey, there's a Planet Fitness. Let me go ahead and get my workout in, see if I can park there right, for the right. night, yada, yada, yada. And then right. just then just do what I need to do and then be at my spot in the morning. That's right. my that's my takeaway from it. But what's your takeaway from it? I, I'm going to agree with you on your take. And uh, the moral of the story is become an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, lead trucking to the truckers. Because this, this is this is what's making the industry drive down daily. Stuff like this, y'all killing us. Why don't the the unemployment and the prisons uh, push landscaping or or plumbing and all this other? I mean, most prisons and unemployment have HVAC schools and all that stuff that they teach. Why are they pushing CDL on everybody now? And now we got more drivers than work. And then you get guys like this. Do I have fuel? No, you don't have no fuel. It's funny that you said prison because that's exactly where he came from. He just got out recently. I know plenty of guys that came through and that's how they got theirs. And they called me, yo, tell me what I, man, I ain't telling you nothing because this ain't for you because it doesn't, this, this, this is a, this is a rolling. First of all, being in a truck is identical to being in prison. Only difference is you're moving. And you're able to get in out your cell when you need to. You have the same. If you have to report your same. If you're a driver with a company, you got a you got a company driver ID. So when you call in, you got to give them your ID number, your truck number is your cell number, your trailer number is is your uh, uh, movement number. Speak on it, sir. And your 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 actual dimensions of your cab from the bunk to the windshield is only two feet less than the actual cell itself. Speak on it, sir. So you have a single bunk and a double bunk, just like if you were in prison. So you're actually rolling in a prison. You're in a prison cell. So when you call in, this is inmate number, such and such and such and such, uh, uh, cell number, such and such. It's the same exact thing. And you can't move until you get clearance from one station to the next. Then what happens? The DOT roll up on you. That's the same as when they start doing inspections in the prisons and they start tossing motherfucking cells. The DOT climb up and down your damn truck all in and out and start tearing up shit for no reason. And it costs you money, just like if you was in prison. So there's really no difference. Only it is that you can stop and get out your cell whenever you want to and stretch your legs. So the mindset of a prisoner becoming a driver, the the PTSD of being a prisoner is still going to be there for you. And I'm telling you this because I know. So I don't know why these guys, everybody is flocking to truck. It, it's not there anymore. The the pandemic and TikTok and uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook has killed this industry. It over flooded, saturated it, and now we have more drivers than work. Big G's got it locked. Boy. Want you to love me all night? Yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet? Yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G? Yeah.